the Hurricane Research Division, which is located on Key Biscayne around 1960. And I think probably the most important um, event, at least in terms of hurricane forecasting, uh, was the advent of the geostationary satellites beginning in the uh, mid-1960s. Uh, this probably is one of the single most important tool that we use at the National Hurricane Center. Um, uh, on, the, uh, on the aircraft for constant flights, uh, we use drop sons. Uh, these have become increasingly more sophisticated over time. Uh, now we use the GPS sons as, as of the late 90s, and they're very precise. Uh, we can get data uh, every, every half second uh, as, they, as they descend within the storm. Uh, and in more recent years, we have the addition of ocean buoys. And many of you are familiar with uh, these, these recent additions of scatterometer, both QuickScat and ASCAT and the set frequency microwave radiometer, which is something that we've only begun to use in the last uh, several years. Okay, so let's compare and contrast uh, exactly what was available uh, between 1938 and, and a more recent uh, catastrophe. Um, here we have the life cycle of Hurricane Katrina. Uh, we can follow it day by day. Um, so we can track it, engage its intensity. Um, here it is in its formative stages, and we see it peaking in, in intensity over the Gulf of Mexico and later uh, make landfall. This is all easy now because we have um, a variety of weather satellites which can probe the storm. But in addition to that, we have, um, we have Air Force Reconnaissance aircraft, which we didn't have back in 1938, of course. Um, so a variety of observational platforms at our disposal. Um, and I don't think that those back in 1938 could fathom exactly um, uh, the type of technology that we, uh, we have nowadays, and we should be grateful for that, I, I suppose, uh, because um, certainly we can follow every move of the storm. So the data that we collect, we have millions and millions of observations, um, and those observations uh, become assimilated within some very complex uh, dynamical forecast models uh, at the Hurricane Center. And these are just one tool that we use uh, in terms of uh, developing the forecast track. This was um, the scenario on August the 24th of 2005. Um, at this time, Katrina was over the central Bahamas. And notice that the track guidance is in pretty good agreement. These right here are just extrapolation and, and clippers. So climatology would call for it to go out to sea. But most of the dynamical models, if not all of them, uh, show a fairly well-behaved track, at least in the short term, with the center crossing the south border peninsula. But it's after that, as the center merges in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, that the model disagreement begins. And it looks, I think it's fair to say at this point, um, that a northwest and maybe even a northward turn was going to occur, but the question is exactly when and where that would take place. Um, and I think that if you read the discussion here, that the forecasters um, uh, mentioned this, um, so there's fairly high confidence early in the forecast period and, and less so later on. This is the verifying track, um, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And here's the cone of uncertainty, which captures that uncertainty, uh, the, uh, uh, captures all the tracks or most of them uh, later in the forecast period. So um, in this case, compared to 1938, lots of, lots of warning, lots of lead time. Um, but the question is, with the given uncertainty, at what point is it time to take action? Right. Two and a half days later, though, um, we do see an, a converging of the model guidance. Um, the center of Katrina is now in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. And uh, we don't always see this, as many of you are aware of. But the guidance has basically collapsed into one main solution. And um, very narrowly here between um, the Mississippi-Alabama border and maybe to just west of New Orleans, that's where the models are saying that landfall is going to take place or was going to take place. And this is noted uh, within the, the discussion that the, the spread of the model guidance has increased um, and that the reliable uh, forecast models are indicating landfall uh, in this general area. So what seems to be the case in this point, there was a key upstream shortwave which was moving across the US. And, and at least two and a half days later, the models did not have a good handle on that feature, uh, which is not uncommon. And we saw this with ICANN. I'll show you an example of that later on. But, but at this point, the models um, are responding to that feature, and they're showing a type of recurvature um, within about uh, the next, uh, over the next few days. So that brings me to our operations at the National Hurricane Center. Um, 
I'm sure several of you are, are familiar um, with the Hurricane Center, and um, you probably know as much about it as I do. Um, but we have three different units. I'm part of the Hurricane Specialist Unit. There are 10 hurricane forecasters. There are four junior forecasters and six senior forecasters. Um, within the unit, we generate the forecast, uh, which go out to five days. Um, we also coordinate with various federal, uh, state, and local officials, um, both domestically and abroad. And then in an average year, we conduct maybe about, or we, um, we issue about 700 full advisory packages, and this is both for the Atlantic and the East Pacific. Um, during the off season, um, by and large, we're responsible for education and training and outreach. And this takes up the bulk of the time, but if there is any more time permitting, uh, we usually spend it in applied research. Uh, we really need uh, more dedicated personnel for, for this main issue. Um, as many of you uh, know, um, we do fairly well with track, but with the intensity uh, forecast problem that there's a lot uh, that remains uh, that, that can be done. And so we really need more dedicated personnel uh, to tackle that problem. Um, and then we have two other groups. Um, these are also vital to the operations at the Hurricane Center, TAP-B, uh, where I worked previously, the Tropical Analysis and Forecast Branch. Um, most critically, they provide uh, satellite classifications to the Hurricane Specialist Unit uh, during the hurricane season using the Dvorak method. And uh, they do this every six hours. Um, but in addition to that, they issue marine and ocean uh, forecasts. They do satellite analyses, and they're open 365, 24-7. So whereas the hurricane forecasters uh, generally only work uh, shifts during uh, for about six months out of the year, these guys are, are working um, shifts all year long. And during hurricane crises, um, they become, uh, they can often uh, support um, our group um, uh, through extra staffing. And probably uh, just as important, uh, the technical support branch, which is the backbone of the Hurricane Center, without them, uh, we would cease to exist. Uh, they provide 24-7 computer support. <coughs> they also help us uh, 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 implement new technologies into the workplace. And also under this group, this is where the storm surge, um, well, this is where the storm surge group resides. Um, and that group has actually been growing in recent years. Uh, there's a new uh, focus now on improving the slosh model and making it even better than it is. Um, and, and oftentimes in hurricane crises, they become uh, support uh, for the hurricane specialist unit. These are the areas of responsibility. Um, in the red, uh, we're dealing, th these are the, this is the area of responsibility for the National Hurricane Center, both the Atlantic and the East Pacific Basin out to 140 West. Um, there has been some talk about extending this area and, and uh, out to the dateline so that we would uh, also uh, take over the Central Pacific Hurricane Center's uh, area of responsibility, but that uh, may take some time. Um, and the other areas are where TAFB issues marine and ocean forecasts. You can see that it goes well into the southern hemisphere, at least in the tropics, and also um, they are a backup to Honolulu um, should they not be able to issue their forecast. So let me go through now, step by step, um, the forecast process that we use at the Hurricane Center, how it's conducted, and what goes into it. Uh, if you have any <coughs> questions along the way,